Hello everyone and welcome to today's episode. In today's episode, we're going to talk about seizure, falls and syncope. I'm going to try to explain to you how to engage with this type of scenario in the OSCE station. So as you can see, I've got three illustrations here and hopefully this will help you understand a little bit better what I'm trying to explain. So with every type of um, history that involves a fall, uh, someone having a fit or a seizure, and someone just basically blacking out or, or syncope, you will need to assess before, during, and after. So if we, if we zoom into this young lady here, so let's assume this is before, before. So it's very important you start with um, um, quite open questions, what happened before, okay? And the patient will be, you know, will be free to give an account of what happened from their own point of view. Um, it's also important to see if there's uh, any witnesses. Uh, most of the time, this kind of history, you will take it from a carer, uh, a bystander, or somebody else. So you just be prepared that you may need to take the history non-specifically from the patient, but from somebody else. So, if the patient is uh, able to remember, you can ask them uh, simple questions. Was there any warning sign? Warning signs? And what were they doing at the time? This is quite important if you want to know if they were exercising or if they were just having a nap or just relaxing. After you've finished the, the point, the beginning, or which is what happened before or the attack, okay, you want to go into what happened during the attack. So let's just go to the second illustration and let's just uh, during. It's very important you know the duration. How long did it, did it last for? Okay, this is probably something uh, the patient may not recollect. So you need to ask the person, oh, how long did, uh, were they, did they black out for? How long did they have the seizure for? And how long after the fall were they unconscious? So quite open questions. Obviously, the question is like, was there any loss of consciousness? L-O-C, which is loss of consciousness. Now, this is very important for your differential to ask um, more specific questions with the flop with the floppy with the jerking with the stiff so let's just let's just uh, put it all down so you need to ask floppy any jerky movement any incontinence any tongue biting Any change in their complexion where they're more uh, pale. So let's just say skin changes. Okay, this is quite important for you to have a broad idea of what may be your differentials and what may be going on. So let's move to after. Does the patient remember what happened? Does the patient remember? Any muscle ache, aches and pain. Very important. And when they're confused, and sleepy, tired. Okay. And obviously, you need to assess the patient. Look for any injuries, any, any, yeah, any obvious injuries. Okay, so it's quite simple to um, go through this kind of history, in my opinion. So once you've got a broad idea of what is going on, you should have a picture of what may be going on. So let's get dive into more, um, more background knowledge. So let's just put another section. Let's say background. So we can ask them 
have this ever happened before previous attacks and how often does it happen some may say every two twice a month every week every day so you have to be kind of like um quite um yeah detailed in, in what they, they may say to you then after that you can ask the general questions you know um any chest pain any palpitation any shortness of breath and his leg swelling what you're trying to do is just kind of looking for um other indication to increase your differentials okay and that's it in regards to the main history for uh, seizures falls and blackouts or syncope now let us um, dive into more um, what may be the, be, be the cause of what you should be thinking when a patient gives you that history so let's go back to the illustration of the lady And just try to dissect what may be going on. So I always try, try to start with the cardiac causes. The first thing you want to think is a posterior hypertension. And one of the common thing is like the patients say, so let's just say posterior hypotension. So the patient will be dizzy. Okay, so the, the first thing with the dizziness. Okay. And some of them may also lose consciousness depending how quickly there's a shift on blood pressure. You can look into any uh, new medication prescribed, new meds. And those are the main thing you can start thinking of is posterior hypotension, which is quite common in the elderly patients. Another cardiac cause is. Uh, could be arrhythmias. Possibly maybe AF or atrial fibrillation. Um, and this is very common in patients who have uh, palpitation and maybe collapse. So you need to link, look into their uh, cardiac history. And when asking, you know, the past medical history, is there anybody that has uh, heart problems in the family and stuff like that. One final cause, uh, cardiac cause that I tend to think of, especially in the OSCE scenario, could be something as simple as uh, AS or aortic uh, stenosis. With this, this may be also common with the elderly. So it's basically short of, shortness of breath on exertion. Okay. And the patient may become so short of breath that they just uh, collapse and uh, loss of consciousness. Okay, so the, these are your main cardiac causes. Another thing you should be thinking about is a proper seizure, which is a neurological type uh, causes. You can circle the brain and just say neuro causes. There's no reason for you to do uh, no much detail about the type of uh, seizures, okay? But it's important for you to know that there's partial, uh, complex partial, and the classic tonic clonic seizure, okay? And then, you know, this is one of the main differential. You'll be have, you know, uh, tongue biting, um, incontinence. You can have loss of consciousness, obviously. Um, jerky movement. So these are the main ones you would think. I don't want to go into much detail of the type of seizures. You can look it up yourself if that's what is your main interest. But in an OSCE scenario, that is the main things they want you to know about. Okay? So, going back to the falls. So, we, that was one of the things we are looking into. 
if a patient has fall, then it could be obviously an elderly patient. We may have uh, maybe Parkinson. So let's just say, um, so Parkinson disease. Obviously the movement is not, you know, poor, they have poor mobility. So they are a bit more uh, stiff and they, they may just have uh, instability because of the poor mobility. And that increases the chances of um, basically having a fall. So keep that in mind. I know that neurological cause of uh, falls, I would say, more than uh, seizure itself, is um, TIA stroke. Okay, it's very uncommon that uh, patient will lose consciousness with uh, TIA stroke, but you know, you don't know. You will find a patient uh, fallen um, because due to weak weakness. Okay, and you know they have you know slow speech, um, limb face uh, weaknesses and stuff like that. So that may be another another one of the causes of uh, a patient um, being found on the floor. Okay, so these are the main uh, things for you to look out for in an OSCE scenario. I know there's plenty of more uh, causes. Okay, so let's just go through one last one, which is the, um, well, it's, it's not related to either the heart or the brain, but it's more related to a response. One of the most common uh, OSCE stations that will come out at the national is the vasovagal cause of a syncope. So, vasovagal. Vagal causes or cause of a syncope. This type of um, syncope or uh, blackout is more normally caused by a response to an emotional stimuli or a, an external st stimuli. So, uh, emotion. Um, so, just let's just say response to an emotion. Um, pain. I've seen um, patient um, blacking out when they're taking uh, their injection or giving blood. That can happen, uh, which is also related, obviously, maybe fear of uh, of needles. Okay, needles. And sometimes patient may have vasovagal symptoms due to a change in temperature. I remember one of the uh, stations at the national was a, uh, a scenario of a patient having a blackout because it was a quick change of, uh, of temperature and it was just too much for her. So maybe they say sweating or excessive uh, sweating. Okay, and many, many other causes. And most patients will have preceding symptoms. So let's just say free C um, preceding symptoms. Could be maybe, I don't know, um, nausea, pallor, changing pallor, just feeling just not themselves. So let's just say nausea, um, skin changes, and so forth. Okay. And generally the loss of consciousness doesn't, doesn't last for that, for that long. So let's just say about two to three minutes. Okay, and that will make you think, okay, maybe a vasovagal cause of these symptoms, of this loss of consciousness. Okay, and there's many other uh, causes of falls, could be mechanical, could be other heart conditions, um, other neurological conditions such as multiple sclerosis, um, I don't know, um, alcohol abuse, um, triple A's, and um, appendicitis. So the list goes on and on and on and on. Even anemia can cause pa patient to have a fall or lose consciousness. So it's important to have uh, a broad idea of, that, of what may be going on. But during the national, the important thing is to be safe, take a good history, and present your finding. I hope this guy. I hope this video helped you guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.